North Carolina is on the cutting edge of biofuels research and production. Students and instructors at the Brunswick Community College Center for Aquaculture and Biotechnology have developed a process by which oil can be extracted mechanically from algae. Our program has focused on um, the culture of algae for about the last four years as an application to biotechnology. Um, the last two years we've had a joint project with aquaculture. Um, scaling up algae production and extracting oil from the algae is a possible feedstock for biofuels. This new patent pending process holds the promise of being a safe and economical way of producing biofuel on a large scale. The first step is maintaining algal cultures in the lab. Our technician is demonstrating the process of aseptic technique. A solution of 70% ethanol is used to wipe down the interior of the laminar flow hood and all of the items placed inside the hood. Surface sterilization is important in reducing the possibility of contamination. Next, the ethanol lamp is lit. A culture tube with an existing culture is opened, and the lip of the tube is flamed. A pipette is used to withdraw liquid from the existing culture. Approximately 10 milliliters of the viable cells in media are transferred to fresh, sterile media. As the culture is transferred, the technician must be sure that the pipette tip does not touch anything, including the sides of the culture tube or the fresh media. Before the tube is closed again, the top of the tube and the lid are flamed to minimize contamination that may be on surfaces. Inverting the tube after inoculation mixes the culture thoroughly in the fresh media. This method is called proper sterile or aseptic technique and is a regular procedure utilized in cell culturing. The second phase is scaling up the cultures from the normal maintenance tubes to a larger volume. Freshly made media is placed into a sterile culturing flask. Again, it's important not to touch the tip of the bottle with the flask. A dense culture from an existing tube is now transferred into the culture flask with the fresh media in order to begin the scale-up process. The culture is swirled and placed in the proper culture conditions within the cell lab. The same procedure is used to further scale-up cultures to an even larger volume prior to inoculation of the photobioreactor system. To ensure enough cells are transferred, it is best to homogenize the culture prior to inoculation. This is especially important for non-motile species since they tend to congregate at the bottom of the flask. The new larger volume is placed back in the cell laboratory to grow for two to four weeks Next, the cultures are transferred to the photobioreactor system. In the past, these 60-gallon fiberglass tubes were used to grow algae to feed shellfish. The tubes are now part of a new 1,800-gallon system designed to produce algae on a large scale. We uh, are able to produce very dense cultures of microalgae, uh, single-celled and colonial microalgae. Uh, with high lipid content, maintain fairly uh, pure cultures, be able to produce a dense crop of algae for the production of algal oil for biofuel. Regular maintenance for the photobioreactor system involves cleaning the exterior and interior of the tubes to maintain proper light penetration in an effort to maximize algal growth. 
The student team checks algae in the system to determine cell density of target species, look for species contamination, check salinity, turbidity, and water quality on a regular basis. Our program is unique because um, they're actually able to perform the experiments, get results, learn how to interpret the data, um, and have that you know, direct relationship with um, laboratory experiments, equipment, supplies, things that they would come in contact with in a, in a normal industry or research laboratory. The algae are harvested using a rotating drum filter with a filter size of one micron. The filter is easily able to remove the algae, which are four microns in size. One of the primary challenges of using algae for fuel is oil extraction. Brunswick Community College has developed a unique mechanical separation process. High frequency ultrasound is used to burst the algal cells and to release the oil contained within them. The sonicated culture is run through a foam fractionator, also known as a protein skimmer. The foam adheres to the lipids and the other biological molecules, separating them from the remaining cellular biomass. The oil attaches itself to the foam, and the foam is partitioned off from the rest of the materials. The final stage is centrifugation. This process separates components based on density. Just as oil floats on top of vinegar in salad dressing, the extracted cellular lipids will float to the surface of the centrifugated fraction. Cellular debris is concentrated at the bottom, then water and proteins, and the fats and oils will form a layer on the surface. Each component can then be siphoned off individually. The result is the successful extraction of oil from algae. Our next step in the production process would be to scale that up further. Uh, most of the industry right now is actually focused on producing algae in photobioreactors and has pretty well given up on pond production. Uh, personally, I don't think that's the way to go. If we want to lower the cost of production or minimize the cost of production, we're really going to have to develop viable, workable commercial pond culture techniques. We are now looking for federal funding to continue our project. Um, we've successfully produced algae and biomass, extracted oil from that algal biomass, and now we're looking at to refine and optimize that process. So that's our next step, is to secure um, enough funding to continue our project and be able to file a full patent. For more information, go online to brunswickcc.edu or call 1-800-754-1050. Information can also be found online at ncbionetwork.org.